Now, as Sharif had held off a challenge from former cricket star Imran Khan to win a third term as Pakistan's Prime Minister this week, he'll continue ruling the second largest Muslim country in the world, the only Islamic nation that is a declared nuclear power. Professor, Le Professor of International Relations Robert Patman joins us with some analysis. Good, Good evening. evening. Tell us a wee bit about Mr Sharif's history. Well, Mr Sharif uh, was previously Prime Minister of Pakistan on two occasions during the 1990s, but then he was overthrown in a military coup in 99 and then went into exile for about seven or eight years in Saudi Arabia. So he's demonstrated he's the comeback kid. Many people wrote him off when he re-entered Pakistan's um, political arena. But he's pulled off what I think many people thought was a surprise victory because much of the Western media in particular were impressed by Imran Khan, the former cricketer, and thought that he would be the fresh face that Pakistan needed. But mm. it seems that the Pakistan electorate has thought otherwise. Now, he has been labelled as a religious conservative. What does that mean in the Pakistan Social context? conservative, I would say, really. Mm. Uh, he's been measured about his comments towards religious terrorist groups such as um, the Taliban, uh, that's not to say that uh, he, he hasn't condemned them per se, which has drawn some criticism, but he's also a businessman. He comes from a very wealthy family, and he's an industrialist, or he was, at least his father was, and so I expect he'll be seeking... To, uh, one of the things that seems to have won him the election was his emphasis on getting the economy going. Pakistan is a country of 180 million people. It needs growth of about 8% a year. It's only beginning about 3 to 4% a year. So it, it needs... Uh, I think most people tended to switch uh, to Mr Sharif because he seemed to have the economic credentials to deal with the economic crisis that now confronts the country. How has he been doing his la in his last two terms then? Well, that is a bit of a mixed record. He certainly established a, co a cooperative relationship with uh, the Clinton administration and he has good links with the Americans. And interestingly, with his uh, election um, on Sunday, it appears that uh, Mr Obama has just congratulated him and India seems to be quite warm. In uh, He seems to be quite a pragmatic politician, uh, but a socially conservative. So he's not likely to do anything too radical in terms of changing things at home. Although I think we will see him privatising some big state-owned enterprises in an attempt to get the economy moving. Pakistan is subject to power cuts on a daily basis, anywhere between 16 hours to 18 hours. And his solution to that is to try to roll back the frontiers of the state and uh, cut, uh, basically privatise many of these concerns which contribute to this problem, as he sees it. Mm. What are some of the main challenges, apart from power cuts, facing yeah. Pakistan? I, I think balancing the relationship with the United States. It's, he's, he's spoken out against uh, America's drone attacks uh, in Pakistan. He hasn't condemned Pakistan's Taliban, which is classified by Washington as a terrorist threat. And so he's got to somehow, um, and it's always a delicate relationship for Pakistani leaders, uh, assert national sovereignty on issues that he thinks Pakistanis care about, such as uh, they do not like the drone attacks, which are done without, often without Pakistan's consent, so he'll want to rein in those attacks without upsetting Washington. Mm. Um, so it's going to be an interesting relationship to watch, but it's, I think at the same time Washington will be pleased by the fact they've got someone I in Islamabad who seems to be a pragmatist on the economy and indeed a champion of free enterprise. And Osama bin Laden was killed in Pakistan mm. uh, a little while ago. What have been the political ramifications in that country? Well, quite profound. Uh, the relationship between the United States and Pakistan became extremely concerned under the previous government following that episode. And it seemed to, if you like, tie into the narrative that America just does not respect mm. Pakistan's sovereignty. They didn't consult Pakistan about the operation which they took out Osama bin Laden, and it seemed to have overlap with the other episodes, the other episodes involving drone attacks. So I think, in a sense, Mr. Sharif has played into that concern by saying he will protect Pakistan's national interests. He's been rather less specific how he's going to do that. Professor of International Relations.